What's up, War Report family? We are back with another weekly edition of Watch the Film. We got a real special edition for you guys this week. This week joining us is Devin Aroma Shadu. You know, you guys know this guy, man. He's he's been with us a few times, but he brought a special guest uh, that we've been trying to track down for a few uh, few weeks here. Ben Obumanu is joining us uh, for this session. Ben, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me. I know I've been hard to catch up with, but you went to the right source, man. Devin knows how to get get a hold of me, so glad to join the War Report. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. Listen, so uh, this segment is actually brought to you by Devin. (laughs) Good-looking guy here in a suit is a mortgage banker. Devin, you want to tell people how they can find you? You can reach me through my email. Um, I'm, I'm a mortgage lender, and I'm licensed in Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Virginia and Maryland. So if you're looking for a uh, for a home, refinance, anything, please, please don't hesitate to give me a call or email me. Thank you. Oh, oh man, listen, you're in Virginia. I didn't know that, man. I'm up here in DC. I might have to hit you up. Yeah, please do. <laughs> a little mortgage needs. Okay, guys. So uh I want to talk a little bit tonight about uh wide receiver play. Uh now, now you guys are, are, are my era, the greatest era of Auburn football. Both you guys played on an undefeated squad, uh, but you also have the distinction of playing during a time where uh, you did a lot of blocking. I mean, we weren't these pass-happy offenses that you see lately. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Ben. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about what it was like playing during the Tuberville? Tuberville? Yeah, because we've already heard Devin talk about this. (laughs) Yeah, we've heard Devin talk about this, but playing during the Tuberville era and, and, and catching passes from Jason Campbell, yeah, it was actually, like you said, it was a great time to be an Auburn Tiger, um, especially we played with a lot of good uh, athletes who end up playing on the next level. The biggest thing, I think, with Devin and I both, uh, we all got recruited to come to Auburn to help out the passing game. I think when you think about you know Ronnie Brown being on the roster, uh, Cadillac Williams coming from this, this, this rookie freshman, freshman year, having, you know, uh, uh, one of the best SEC rushing records or years for a freshman running back, they brought a lot of receivers in to kind of reinforce the passing game. So we came in. We knew that we had some, you know, some, some studs back there in the backfield. I think even uh, in our couple of years, we ended up picking up more studs with Trey, Trey Smith, and uh, Brandon Jacobs. And you know, it seemed like every year they kept getting these five-star running backs and kind of put us at disadvantage a little bit in, in terms of catching passes. But we also knew coming in um, that yeah, we would have to block, but at the same time, hopefully, we was, we was a, on the impression that we come back in, open up some things in the passing game, some play action passes that we do have those chances for shot plays. Jason, you know, Brandon Cox, whoever's going to be our quarterback will give us a chance to make some plays on the field. So we had some of those plays too, as much, as much uh, as, as, you know, we ran the ball, we did have some good plays where we got a chance to, to make some plays down the field too. Yeah, Mike, your question to Devin. Yeah, now Devin, um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, we've already talked to you about that era of football, but like, what it would be like we've talked about this a little bit to be in this era of football like the do, do you think you could flourish in a brian harson offense right because we've had seven games now of that offense do you think you could flourish in a brian harson type of offense i mean I, I i think so i mean what receiver i mean just in this era of football period i don't think it everybody's throwing the football right. so it doesn't really matter where you go it's fast high pace and it's about 40 to 60 balls being thrown a game. So I right. do to answer the question. Yes, I think I'd be able to flourish in this in this style of offense. And I would definitely enjoy it from a selfish standpoint, being a receiver, because you're going to get you're going to get some targets. Right. Yeah, definitely. All right. I'm going to come back to Ben here. Um, wait, let me. Oh, because he muted himself. So I can't unmute him if he mutes himself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Ben, I want you to, I want to, I want to go back here because, you know, I I filmed almost every single one of your college practices. Uh, I was out there with you guys holding the camera, uh, and at every game filming the games. Um, can you talk a little bit about the mindset that you guys had as a wide receiver group? I mean, you did, uh, you guys, you were on an undefeated squad, but there were some low moments that previous year uh that you guys had to overcome before you got to that undefeated season um and then i'm going to ask you about one catch in particular uh but can you talk about uh what it was like from 2003 to 2004 yeah i think you, you hit your head you know the, the, the nail right in the head 
that 2003 team, we had a lot of high expectations. We had a lot of, you know, five-star recruits, a good recruiting class, some of them, and recruited. So the pieces were there, and it just was a matter of could we put the product on the field. And I think we struggled a little bit um, on finding an identity, trying to figure out the offense. You know, we had uh, a new offense coordinator. Uh, Petrino had left the year before. So that 2003 you know, season, we were trying to figure out, you know, what our, what our identity was, how could those pieces fit together. And I think the biggest thing was we had a tough schedule, too. You know, going back yeah. to playing USC, um, you know, still going back playing uh, Georgia Tech that, you know, that next week. It just was a, a tough role for us. And I think it kind of set the stage for us for that, you know, the year, the very next year. We learned from those mistakes, learned from that, that tough season. But I think that the biggest thing was trying to figure out our identity. We had, you know, good running backs, good receivers, a good quarterback. Everything on paper looked well. And that's what I think you see around – Sports in general, especially in the college landscape, a lot of teams look good on the preseason on paper, but it's a matter of can, can you jail, can you come together, can you figure out who your pieces are, who the playmakers are, and get the ball in their hands as, a, as an offense. And I think we struggled with that early on. We kind of, you know, drug our feet a little bit that 2003 year and kind of slowly won some games, but it, it, it did set us up for that next year in 2004. We started recognizing, all right, that offseason uh, leading to that 2004 season, we, we learned a lot from – the, the hype that we may have, you know, hyped ourselves and listened to the papers a little bit more than what we wanted to. And we all had, you know, the goals of going out, winning the national championship, playing for the national championship, you know, playing in the NFL. And I think that's what drove us to be able to come together that offseason to be able to figure out, you know, how can we make this thing work? The coaches recognized that we had the talent. We knew we had the talent. But it was it was more so spending a true offseason getting together and, you know, letting all that hard work in the offseason pay off, you know, game one. And that's what happened to us. We, we had a, a good start to the season. Ben, let me ask you about uh, Ole Miss 2003. Um, Eli Manning comes to town. Uh, you, you had a big catch to go all the way down the field. I think it was a screen that JKM threw to you. You run it down the field. And then a few plays later, uh, you had the drop her around the world in the end zone. Can you talk about uh, what the support that you got from your teammates during that time? And like, can you talk about um, how you, as a receiver, how you come back from, you know, such a high to what is really kind of a, was a low during that game, you know, dropping that ball to, to win the game. And then you have an excellent season the next season. But can you talk about in the aftermath of that game, how you handled it, how you guys came together as a team and how they supported you? Yeah, you're right. The I think the biggest part about that is the, the hype leading up to the to the, the drop itself, right? Uh, not only did I have a, a, a big catch to kind of get us down there, but even in the game I had scored a touchdown earlier, uh, that 2003 year, like you said, we were still struggling trying to figure out, even as recruits, and Devin can say it, you start second-guessing yourself sometimes too about, you know, the school, the choice you made. You see other guys, other schools catching a lot of balls. And so you, you want to recognize, like, how can I be effective? How can my skill set transfer to this next level when I have my breakout game? And so it felt like for me, you know, that was a breakout game. I had, you know, I think over 100 yards receiving or something, had a touchdown already, got us down in the position. So that was the high in that game. And so, so quickly to turn around and be in a situation to have the game win the touchdown pass, I was ready for it, or at least I thought I was, right? Uh, I always said, looking at, back at that play, that screen pass, if only – I think it was Ronnie Brown or somebody, maybe Cadillac, I think, got in the way. If you would have moved out of the way, I would have scored. I wouldn't have, had, I wouldn't have gotten to that situation to have to drop the ball in the first place. So that's the first part. I blame Cadillac. Uh, I'm going to pass the buck here, so I'm playing Cadillac for getting in the way. The pass itself, though, is like you said, from a receiver standpoint, we run that play all the time, running the back line of the, of the end zone. I think my problem was I, I thought I was covered. I didn't know I was open as much as I was. And so Jason, man, when he came back and, and his arm came back and Jason got this long wand of this long delivery, he wound his arm up like he was about to fire the ball in, and then he just slowly just <laughs> lost it out there. And it, it, I, I admit, as a receiver, it fooled me. I was like, okay, for him to wind his arm up, I know there's a, a DB somewhere. He was on me. Was, it was man-to-man. I, I ran my route. I gave him a, a shake at the top. I'm running the back line. There's no way I'm wide open. So – Crazy, crazy enough, I, we do think about these things, right, Devin? We do think yeah. like, all right, I'm not wide open. It should be somebody here. I got to catch it. I got to ball up. I got to, I got to cradle it. So when I saw all those things come together in, in the throw, you know, thinking that I'm covered, thinking that somebody's gonna, you know, come back. The DB's trying to come back and recover, thinking that Jason's gonna fire it in. I jump, and that, you know, kind of just from that moment right there, when I jumped, it's kind of like, uh oh, 
this is a softball. So having my <laughs> hands this way to catch the ball to having to turn my hands this way to go catch mm-hmm. the ball that's really at my at my ankles, I just I just dropped the ball. So it's one of those things, man, for me, it was tough uh, to, you know, drop the game with a pass after having such a high, uh, having family and friends there, having that moment in 2003 trying to come, in, you know, come into my own as a, as a receiver saying I made the right decision, I'm making some plays. But I think the biggest thing was the support, like you mentioned, that I got after the game. Um, I think I prepared myself in general just seeing guys. I've always seen guys like miss field goals, uh, drop game winning passes. I know, you know, Bill Buckner with the Red Sox, who the ball went through his legs at first base in the World Series. I've always seen those plays and I always thought to myself, like, man, they just made a mistake, man. They just, you know, they didn't mean to drop the ball. And I think that's what happened with me after the game, going to the podium and answering questions and telling people, like, I just dropped the ball. Same way we dropped the ball in life. I didn't, you know, drop the ball on purpose, but I think it's just one of those plays where it just wasn't my time. And so the support I had from Devin, it, it all started with receiver room or anything else with Devin and Anthony Mix and Courtney Taylor. Um, they were the first ones to come back to me and say, man, hey, it's okay. And to have brothers like that in the locker room to come back in, in the receiver room especially, to say, hey, we've seen you make that play a thousand times. You know, we also might have, you know, had trouble catching that ball. But at the same time, you're going to make a lot of more catches uh, at, on your Auburn jersey, your Auburn career. And, and I think that was the, the sentiment I got from all my Auburn fans, uh, not just in Auburn, but around the country too, that, hey, being still a good guy, being still a great receiver, he'll make many, many more plays. And most importantly, he owned up to it and said, you know, that it was him that dropped the ball. Mm. I didn't say that. I said they should have threw me the ball. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you was open? Oh, you was open, yeah. I was open, man. I was on the sideline. Don't, don't make me go pull that film. I might go pull that film I don't think right I was now. the end of the play. Oh, yeah, but, oh. yeah, we definitely consoled it, man. It was, I would I would tag Black in this video, and I'm gonna let him know. Listen, Ben said that you had just got out the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, watch the film. Hey, bring the film. Up. The deal, huh? to, hey, he's trying to find somebody to block. I'm like, man, more the way I'm already tired. My legs tired. I got tackled, man. I think like, it, it was all set up to be that way, right? I think, like you said, with Elon Manning coming to town, we were still competing for an SEC West title. Um, it was just one of those big games, prom time, the national televised game. It was one of those games where we all dreamed about receiving to make the play. And it just was, you know, I, did, I didn't make the play that day, but also grew as a person and grew to be able to help other kids, other athletes, man, who had that same kind of moment. I feel for you. I've been there before. And I, it's one of those things where I share all the time to kids who drop passes and who struggle in life. But hey, go, go look up Ole Miss 2003 and then come back and, and let's talk, talk about, you know, failures or – disappointments in life. So it's one of those things where maybe it was meant for me to, to be the person to drop that pass. Awesome. Uh, I one more question for Devin and then we're going to get to this film. Yeah, I, I was going to ask Devin, man, like we, we haven't really talked about any of, I, I want to segue into what we're going to talk about in this film as far as like drops, right? Because that's been mm-hmm. just an ongoing conversation amongst the Auburn faithful about the current wide receiver core about drops. Right. And uh, there's some things I want to, when we get into the film, talk about what Ben said about just kind of the expectation of how the pass was going to be delivered versus what actually happened. But can you talk a little bit about how you get over a drop, right? Like it might not be a game winning situation, but like what does a wide receiver need to do mentally to get himself in a position I've dropped a couple of passes. How do I get myself back into a space where forget about it, keep playing? Right. Um, I mean, it's all like it's it's, it's all mental. I, I think catching the ball is something that most people can learn to do. It's mental. You just take your time and focus on what you're doing and not think about the next step. But the main thing is just understanding that I think part of it, especially when you're in college, is having the team around you. And, and it being okay for you to drop a pass, just like the same thing with a quarterback, it being okay for him to throw an interception. It's part of the game. When you make dropping the ball not part of the game, then I think that's what really messes up players because they're making failure not be part of the game, which you're going to fail at some point in the game. Maybe you may have a close to perfect game, but you're going to mess up at some point. So if you understand that you just drop the ball and move on to the next play, then you've forgotten about it. But if you feel like I'm supposed to go out here and be perfect and do everything right now, that kind of weighs on your shoulders. So I think just from a confidence standpoint, having a coach on the sideline that I was watching the game uh, the other week, I can't remember who it was, but 
the receiver dropped the ball. It was a college game. Receiver dropped the ball. The coach gave him five and tell him get back out there on the field. You know, that's the type of response you want want to have from your coaches, not somebody you drop a pass and then pulling you out the game. It needs to be the exact reverse of that. Leave them in the game and let them overcome that that adversity because he's gonna face you're gonna face adversity more more than that. It may not be with a drop pass, could be with a missed assignment at some point in the game, and you got to overcome that. So you don't want you don't want a guy to drop a pass and be looking at the sideline thinking he's got to come out of the game. No, you leave that guy in the game and let him figure out how to overcome that, and that helps the player build his confidence and know how to deal with the adversity. So I think it comes from at that age from coaching, just them understanding that hey, if you drop a pass. You're still going to be in the game. We're coming back to you again, so be ready. Um, so I think it's just a, a mental part on how the guys going into the game. You don't want them going into the game thinking, okay, I got to catch every pass. Yeah. Just going to the game knowing if I drop one, I get back out there and get ready for the next play because we still got to finish the game. The game doesn't stop when you drop the ball. So, right. you know, that that type of mindset that they kind of instill in the players, I think that'll help them with dropping passes because they're going to be drop balls in every game. Right. Well, uh, speaking of drop balls, we're going to look at some today. Uh, <laughs> I, I pulled some film uh, right now. It's funny. When I think back to when you guys played, um, you know, that 2003 drop that, you know, I appreciate Ben going into that, uh, while notable, was one of only a few drops that I remember vividly. Right. Um, and really only because of the situation, you guys caught just about everything that came your way and uh, opportunities were limited. So catching the ball was important when it did get thrown at you. Uh, so between uh, the two of you, Courtney Taylor and Anthony Mix, it was a pretty solid wide receiver core. And, and that year before you guys had uh, sci-fi, you guys had Silas Daniels on that 03 team, I think. Um so you, I mean, you guys caught a lot of balls. Uh, there were some drops, but again, uh, we're going to talk about drops today because we're talking about mentality, right? How do you forget the drop, move on to the next play? And then um, I want to hear from you guys about uh, the fundamentals of being a receiver. You line up and you see a DB in a certain stance or he's playing five yards off you. And what are you thinking? What did you read? Uh, we're going to get into all that. Again, this is Watch the Film. You are watching the War Report. This is brought to you by Devin Aroma Shadu, Mortgage Baker. Devin, tell them where they can find you, man. You can find me at my email address. That's the best way to reach me, Devin Aroma at leaderone.com. I am licensed in Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Virginia, and Maryland. So please reach out if you're in need of mortgage or refinance. Mm -hmm. 